lots of information that you guys provided on the what and the how with regard to this. And we know that the mission of Sesame Workshop is to help children grow smarter, uh, stronger, and kinder. And Sesame, Sesame Street and Communities really does embody what that is supposed to be to deliver that mission. Uh, you know, this is right in line with the vision and mission of many treatment courts, both nationally and internationally. So Jeanette, can you talk a little more about the core of the Sesame Street and Communities and how to create these resources to connect those families? Thank you, Vanessa. First, I have to say that I think we're going to take Jackie from the association and come to the <laughs> workshop to, to tell us how to integrate our resources. But uh, with Sesame Street and Communities, you heard very, very succinctly that the goal is how do we create these resources, again, for adults to really work with children, but that it is research-based. And for us, research-based really indicates that idea of hearing from those directly coordinating with the young children. That's not just parents and caregivers, it's that surrounding community influence. And we believe in that, but we also believe in very strict guidelines around equity and also holistically looking at what children need. It's not just one topic, that in truth, if we're going to develop our children's well-being, we need to do it much more holistically, and that's the approach we believe in. And the fact, finally, these resources are for free, and they should be used and can be used by everyone. So free 99. Free 99, and there's lots of material that she's referenced that are on the tables out there that we want, want you guys to make sure you take advantage of. But one of the things you said was, right, right there, absolutely. One of the things that you talked about was holistic, and we know that recovery capital is a part of that holistic approach, right, Jackie? So first, give us a little refresher really quick about recovery capital, and then talk about how Sesame Street and community can utilize uh, their resources to build that long-term recovery. So just if it's a quick takeaway, recovery capital is all the personal and tangible resources that a person needs in order to initiate and sustain recovery. And again, that exists within the personal, the social, and the community realm. So when you're thinking about your client, we keep talking about this holistic. Again, we do a very good job in our treatment courts of wrapping around our clients while they're inside their, our programs, but we need to think more about post-program involvement again, to help them sustain that long-term recovery. And so that's what, the, that's what recovery capital is about, is helping them to not only build their skills while they're with us through that therapeutic process and in probation, again, you have these wonderful skills that you've learned through core correctional practices. Um, and, and, you know, peer recovery, helping them to, to um, navigate systems, and then that reinforcement that they get in the courtroom, but helping with the natural supports in the communities. And we want to try to strengthen that community and social support network as much as possible. And that's really what uh, Recovery Capital is all about. Thank you. You know, uh, as we listen to you, uh, Jeanette, one of the things that you've talked about and we've had conversations about, as a matter of fact, was two statistics that really stood out to me. And the first one was, um, to date, 200,000, 200,000 children have lost a parent or a main caregiver um, as a result of the COVID pandemic. And that's startling. And then the other one was a 44% decrease in accessing mental health services. So I'm going to share that statistic and then I'm going to throw it back over to, to uh, Jackie. If any of you know her, she always tells you that adolescent brain development is her jam, right? <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that's her phrase. So that being said, can you talk to us a little bit about how these type of traumatic incidents impact a youth's brain development? Well, okay, I have a half an hour only, so um, no, I'm, I'm kidding, I'm not gonna take up that much time. We do, we tend to talk a lot in our treatment courts, of course, about adolescent brain development and young adult brain development because that's the populations that we're working with. And we, we have a lot of science now on this, and we know that the brain's not fully developed until about 25, 26 years of age, especially this prefrontal cortex, which is that sort of CEO of the brain, um, and that there's more operation out of the amygdala, that area of fight or flight. Um, and so that's important within our treatment court context, especially if, actually if we're dealing with some young 
younger parents in terms of thinking about some of these Sesame Street resources. But if we back it up to um, really looking at childhood and child brain development, it's important to recognize how much brain activity there is really between birth and six to seven years of age. And the, the brain by age five to six is about 90 to 95% the physical size of the, of the adult brain. So it really is, um, it, it's large in size. And then starting at around age two, there's a, a lot of brain activity happening um, with synapses and, and neurons. And, and two-year-olds, actually, I had to write this down because I had forgotten about it, actually. But two-year-olds have twice as many synapses happening as adults. <laughs> so if you're wondering why it's a little bit harder for you to learn like a foreign language than it is to learn it as a young child, this is in part, in part why. But because there is so much happening in that child brain in terms of development, those are very formative years in the brain, um, the effects of, of stress can really um, alter the brain um, development of these young children. And so there's different types of stress, that some is positive, actually some is tolerable, and then there's some that is toxic. And toxic stress is repeated exposure to such things as abuse or neglect or parental substance use, uh, extreme poverty or you know, without living without a home. And so all of this can have lifelong uh, impacts in terms of physical health, organ health, and, and even brain health in, in these children. And that's why having caring adults around these young children and, and who are able to kind of help relieve some of these stresses for these children is so important um, at, at, in those younger years uh, because the brain is also, it has this wonderful plasticity about it and has the availability and, and, and availability to recover basically. Thank you. Jeanette, um, you know, you talked a little bit about parental incarceration and shared this amazing video. Um, and you also shared the video on parental addiction where we can have those very helpful conversations in a manner that children can, uh, can uh, really understand those. But can you talk a little bit about Sesame Street and communities tools that really focus on building that resiliency and offering that support and that comfort for these children? Absolutely, and picking up off what Jackie just indicated, when you boil that down in terms of how young children cope with stress, uh, whether it's typical stress as we all should have or really, again, upgrading to leading to toxic stress. One of the factors that mitigates those effects of particularly toxic stress are, is the idea of relationships, but a secure and consistent adult. So in the context of, of these issues, one of the things that we do is we create these resources in such a way that are giving that sense of direction of also resilience, building that sense of I am guiding myself as an adult but also children as well to cope with challenges not only in the short run but also in the longer run so that these strategies are really supporting life going forward. And what you find is particularly uh, one of the resources that we also, we didn't talk about, was particularly one on how we translated ACEs, or adverse childhood experiences. We actually labeled them traumatic experiences to be a little bit more concrete, and it was just the basics out of everything, regardless of what the issue is, what does the adult and child need together? So it's that sense of consistency, security, touching another individual who's consistently there. And lastly, what I believe treatment courts do, a sense of hope for the future. I do wanna just reiterate here sure. the importance that, that the research indicates that that supportive, responsive relationship with adults for these children that have had that toxic stress exposure and repeated toxic stress exposure in their brain can actually just prevent or reverse that, the damaging effects of that toxicity, that toxic stress in the brain early on. And like Jeanette referenced, play is, is so important and builds resiliency in children. And for so many of our parents, they might not know how to play with their children. 
And, and these resources can help the parents learn how to play with their children. And so, so, so criti critically important. And you know, ultimately, at the end of the day, the work that we do in treatment courts is really around building that resiliency. We want to work ourselves out of a job, right? And this is one of the tools that we can utilize to do that. But we have to also go back to that cultural piece because culture plays a huge part on it. And I can share a personal story. I've used the Sesame Street in uh, communities materials with some of my family members. And it helps you not only to recognize where you are in having those conversations, but it also gives you the words uh, to talk with them about it. So I can testify to say that they truly are impactful because I've seen the benefit of them. But again, going back to culture, it plays that significant role. It's about self-development, it is about a value system, and all the decisions they make, like Jackie talked about the two-year-old uh, brain development. I, I don't know whether I'm having some two-year-old flashbacks or whether I'm like that core CEO of my brain still trying to get to where it needs to be. But, but one of the things that this really brings to mind to me is I recently watched a YouTube video, and it was really about why Sesame Street got started. And in all the years of me knowing about Sesame Street, I had never seen that video. Um, and it was really created around the backdrop of the civil rights movement. Um, Sesame Street recognized that uh, poverty was an issue. And Sesame Street actually utilized a, a television as a tool to get p children uh, or of underserved communities engaged in learning, uh, to be better people in general for themselves to begin with. So we fast forward, and now it's 2022. And we have Sesame Street in communities and many, many, many other resources to help children's uh, development, to help family, to help caregivers. And we are really focusing on smarter, kinder, stronger children, right? So having said that and given the backdrop of this, Jackie, I want to pose this question to you. In the context of culture and family reintegration from jail or prison or from a treatment court program, uh, what has the research shown about the value of that cultural connectedness around children and their families? Yeah, that's a great question. I want to uh, remind everybody, I mean, Jeanette shared those slides early on about the number, uh, the amount of parental incarceration of children experiencing parental incarceration for prison. But you just mentioned jails. Mm -hmm. We have almost 12 million jail admissions and releases a year in this country. That is an incredible amount, 12 million people um, cycling in and out of jail. And some of those are your clients. Some of those are our drug treatment court uh, par participants. And you have to realize how even disruptive several days in jail can be to a family. Um, even three to five days in jail we know can have really detrimental effects uh, in terms of losing housing, losing employment, um, severing uh, important relationships. Again, it's, it's not something that helps to build that capital, it actually helps to detract from the capital. And so we want to think about not just, we tend to focus quite a bit on prison reintegration, and, it, and it's very important, obviously, reentry. Um, but thinking about jails are a point of a lot of reentry into the community. And then, of course, we have our treatment courts where we enter back into the community as people leave. Um, the, the research on reentry is, is varied and mixed, but some of the more recent research is very focused on that idea of taking a strength-based approach with the participant or the client as they release from jail or prison and having community supports. Uh, again, getting back to that sort of idea of community capital. And if you just release in, and you have just a certain amount of money in your pocket um, and really no supports, um, your likelihood of failure is very high. And so when we release, we don't want to just be thinking about services. We need, and while that, that is important, we need to be thinking about those supports and where are they releasing to, who can support them. Maybe a peer, a peer recovery specialist can meet them at the doors of that jail as they re-enter. Maybe, maybe it's somebody in the community that you've already identified as a natural support for them that can meet them and help them. Uh, one of the you know, and I've been at this a very long time, but one of the hardest days of my career was several years ago um, when I was walking by our, in, near our um, local county jail and there was a, a gentleman sitting on the steps um, and he had a paper bag in front of him 
and he, he had opened up the bag and he had paperwork strung all over the floor or all over the ground and he was crying and he was probably 50 to 55 years of age and I stopped and said, can I help you? And he said, I have no idea what to do. He didn't know how to read. Um, he had cycled in and out of jail. He'd never done prison time, but he'd cycled in and out of jail uh, much of his adult life. He was without a home. He didn't have employment. Um, and he just had nowhere to go. And that is sometimes what our people face for reentry. And so I really want you to think carefully about not only your drug court client reentering after graduation, but if you're using, if you have to use that jail sanction, thinking about that reentry point at, um, and what that looks like and who can support that person upon that reentry. Yeah, you, you're exactly right, because so many times we just make the assumption, because it's a part of our natural daily routine to access things and know how to access, and we're not asking those critical questions. Something even as simple as when a person knows they're gonna receive a sanction, are we asking who's gonna care for those children and do they have a safety plan uh, for those children are all critical pieces of this process. And I think that just rolls right into the next question that I wanna ask for Jeanette. I love Sesame Street and Community Seven Cs. And I wrote them down because I don't wanna mess them up. You didn't cause the problem, you can't cure or control it, but you can care for yourself by communicating your feelings and making healthy choices and celebrating yourself. I, I love that. Yeah. Sorry, didn't mean to do that. I, I, I love that. Celebrating yeah, yourself. So I get so excited about it. You guys know how I am when I'm presenting, right? Um, but, but Jackie, when you talk about it, I want to mention the S word, and that's stigma. There's so much stigma attached with this, uh, the issue of substance use disorder, uh, recovery, um, and, and even incarceration that we don't want to talk about it. So that stigma continues to persist, right, in, in a, a substance use and mental health disorder situation. How can our treatment courts use the resources that Sesame Street has available uh, to reduce the stigma around this and then to help, especially with that family support system, so that they understand that they're not alone and that this is okay? Yeah, if you think about these resources, and again, once you get the chance to review them, you're gonna be, oh, like, wow, they could, I really see a fit here or there. But you start, again, within that family unit with these materials to help support that child or that caregiver or even the parent. And then once that process has taken hold, think about how, how you can do a good job within the community as a treatment court to better educate your community about the nature of substance use disorder, trying to remove, again, some of this stigma that exists that, that Vanessa just talked about, um, that, that, again, think about this, like in my opening remarks I mentioned, what if the, our purpose of the criminal justice system was to create a healthier individual? And that's what we're trying to do, that's what Sesame Street and Communities is trying to do with their materials and, and, this, and this work. So you know, you start within that, that family, but it will spread over time as well, and especially with your treatment court. Highlight those successes as well. You know, we tend to invite the media in for graduations or those um, other large events, but, but maybe there's a special story to tell there at some point um, that needs to be shared with the community. Can I add one thing Absolutely. As, as I'm piggybacking? Um, one of the tools that you will find in these resources are what we call social media tools. And they are also engagement tools or recruitment tools. What you find is that sometimes a simple invitation, and we have templates to be able to do that, that has sesame characters on it, gives you like the feeling you had and the memories you had when you saw Cookie Monster. So using not only the direct resources, we also created additional resources that are helping you to invite families or providers or your community and communicating a lot of what Jackie is indicating. So we think of it holistically once more in terms of a whole process. You kind of already answered my next question yes. that I was actually <laughs> going to ask um, because I really wanted to talk a little bit more about integration. Um, in family support systems, um, providers in treatment court programs, uh, you know, even me as a police officer working in a treatment court program, how can we utilize these tools when we interact with them? Because the conversation really does have to be seamless and everybody has to be having 
um, the same conversation, right, to be supportive of those individuals. So with Sesame Street and communities, how can we um, send the message of how important this is to, to uh, integrate those families into healthy environments? I think, as you, Vanessa, have just indicated, as well as Jackie, it's, it's really a shift in the sense that by presenting and using Sesame Street and Communities resources and this wonderful brand, you're actually automatically indicating I'm thinking beyond the client that I have in front of me. I'm really thinking much more holistically about the entire family. It shifts your perspectives. It shifts, it shifts your vision of what you're doing. I think the other thing that Jackie indicated, and it's in transparency because our research indicates that, it's you really need a, sh a champion to bring these resources and a commitment to not just use the resources, but have that a much more holistic approach. And so I think we're all here to say you're doing incredible work. And as I said to you in that you slide, you are the key people who are making a difference. You're giving a sense of hope and vision for the future for people who often never have that, especially as parents. So use us, but again, use us strategically and consistently and in a sustainable manner. It's not just like, okay, this one time, but it should become part of your vision, your strategy, and your focus. And so you mentioned some, a word that I love, and that is champions. And clearly, clearly, everyone here today in this room is a champion for this cause because you're here and you're listening and you're very attentive. And so as you think about that and you think about being the champions that you can be um, in your arenas, remember this, the folks that we're working with come back to the com communities that we live in and they engage with our children and our family members, whether it is at school, work, or whatever the case may be. So we challenge you to be those champions uh, for these children, giving them a voice. Uh, and I, I, used to, I used to always say this, shift happens. S-H-I-F-T, shift <laughs> happens. I just want to be clear so I have my job on Monday morning. Um, we can shift the pendulum to make this look really different. So having said that, I'm first going to ask you this question and then I'd like to follow you uh, uh, with it, uh, Jeanette. Uh, Jackie, what is one thing that you would like to give us as a takeaway from the ability to utilize Sesame Street and communities and look at recovery capital and how that can build our programs? Vanessa took my closing line, which was, build a champion. Um, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> find a champion. Um, start the process by being the one that maybe goes back to your court, and you take a look at all these materials, and you pull some people together, and you say, let's have a brown bag lunch. I want to pull these uh, materials up on the screen, and I want to brainstorm how we could use these and where in the therapeutic process. It's very important that you're conscientious about the use of these materials, because again, many of these children and their caregivers, and of course, our clients have long trauma histories. And so we wanna use these materials in a, in, in a trauma-informed way, and that's, they've been built that way as well, to be very trauma responsive. Um, and, so, and then thinking again about the process and how they'll be rolled out, and, and how you're gonna actually measure the impact of what you're doing. I think you, you get some feedback from the parents or the caregivers um, regarding the use of the materials. Did they find it helpful? Um, and then also the team itself. How will the team sort of re reinforce some of this, either judges from the bench or other team members as well? Uh, probation, for example, um, you need to be aware of, what, of how they're being used in the therapeutic environment so that you can reinforce that as well. Is that Thank what you said? Jeanette? My ideas. Thank you. Wonderful ideas, Jackie. And, and, and I can't really say much more because as Jackie indicated, it's that idea of familiarizing yourselves with the resources in the first place, but holistically. They, please remember that even though you love Sesame Street and you think of your childhood, these are both for children and adults, that circle of care. Second is that we really are responding to the most needed issues, and you saw some of those statistics. Our young children, in particular, are in dire situations. Please don't forget them as part of your treatment. Lastly, and I'll share with you quietly, even though it's a large group, 
our, our, <laughs> next, our next effort uh, that we are looking at, and hopefully by next May, we will launch some additional materials during Mental Health Awareness Month. We're looking at how do we look at emotional health and emotional distress from the point of view of young children. We're finding that when it comes to mental health in our country today, it's tremendous focus on youth and adults, but again, silence on young children. So we wanna bring that awareness, so hopefully next time we can be able to share those resources as well and our strategy. Thank you, absolutely. Well, the, as the saying goes, we have not because we ask not. We have asked and both of you have definitely delivered. So I would like to take this opportunity to thank you for your expertise in everything that you do uh, and continue to do and as, as we work together and it gets just bigger and better. So we're excited about that. So you all once again, join me in thanking them.